A reading from the book of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it is a delight to be able to be with you here on this third Sunday of Advent. I was saying earlier that uh, um, the last time, I think it was the last time that I was here uh, for a service, um, there was uh, about a foot and a half of snow fell overnight. And uh, so obviously I come on snow days. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I don't bring the snow, but it, it, you know, anyways, we won't go there. Yes, we won't go there. But a delight to be with you on this third Sunday of Advent, at which we are both observing the third Sunday of Advent and having a confirmation, which is, a, a, and actually, as it turns out with today's reading, a beautiful combination of things to go side by side. I'm going to start with the third Sunday of Advent because, of course, as you know, we have this period of Advent as a time of preparation for the celebration of Christmas, preparing for the celebration of the coming of Jesus in the flesh in the manger at Bethlehem. Um, Also, of course, Advent uh, means us to look further on as well into that day when Christ comes and God's kingdom is consummated um, in in its fullest sense. And on this particular Sunday of Advent, uh, you might have noticed that uh, Derwin lit a pink candle For those of you who don't remember that, it's not because he ran out of blue ones. 
Um, it's because there is this tradition in the life of the church of the third, third Sunday of Advent being, um, uh, is it Laudate, I think is the, la, ga, Gaudate, Gaudate, Laudate, you know, <laughs> praise, anyways, <laughs> they're all Latin words, it's just, yeah. But um, the, and, and the reason will have been obvious uh, for you uh, from the first reading that we had which began with rejoice, and in the very next sentence, exalt. Uh, and it was a time in, uh, when this began that the church uh, saw that the reading is sort of calling us to this rejoicing in the midst of which, midst of which, the midst of, I can't remember the word I was gonna say now. Anyways, in the season in which, has, which has a sort of slightly penitential and um, kind of fasting kind of tone about it normally, we get to this rejoice time, and so they put pink candle on. In some places they even have pink vestments, believe it or not. It's a very interesting thing. But rejoice, 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 a beautiful um, call. But, of course, the question is, why rejoice? Why rejoice? Because they never, the scriptures never say rejoice just because. <laughs> never say just because. Uh, and, and the reading says, rejoice and exult because the judgment that was laid against you is being removed. The Lord is taking the judgment that was against you and it is going to be removed. And then, of course, Israel, because that's who's being spoken to originally in this prophecy, Israel will be redeemed, that its foes will be defeated, and that it will be a place of, of God's reign where God's people live in joy. So rejoice, because this is, is going to happen. This is what God is going to do. And it is uh, meant to fill us with hope and expectation as we hear it, what God is going to do. In terms of uh, our, in terms of bringing about that beautiful reign of God's love and grace in the world. Now, it's uh, in my view beautifully paired with a gospel reading that starts off pretty quickly at the beginning with "You brood of vipers, <laughs> rejoice!" No, he didn't say that. <laughs> You brood of vipers, rejoice. No, he didn't say that at all. In fact, he's, you brood of vipers, and you sort of like, okay, how did we get rejoice Gaudate Sunday with you brood of vipers? Well, of course, we're talking about John the Baptist, and he needs to be dutifully stern in his, his message for us. Um, but I think the beautiful pairing of it is that it's very easy to get onto the track of rejoice and exult, don't worry, be happy, <laughs> um, and forget that the reason behind the rejoice and exult is not because I'm okay, you're okay, everything's fine, don't worry about it, but because things are going to get fixed. God is going to do this, this marvelous and wonderful thing. And John's declaration, his you brood of vipers, is meant to stop people in their tracks. It's meant to stop people in their tracks. And what he says next after it would have, in his context, stopped them in their tracks even more so. <laughs> because what John says next is, do not think to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, <laughs> because God could raise up children of Abraham from the stones. Now, we may not get that in that context, particularly in terms of its full emotional impact. But in its day, you're talking to the people of Israel who are God's chosen people, the royal priesthood that God has appointed out of all the earth, and they are the children of Abraham. This is their unique uh, election as, as, as a people. And John, this great prophet, is saying, forget it. Doesn't mean that. You can't count on that. God can make children of Abraham from anywhere. But instead, of course, people come and say, well, then what should we do? And John says, well, repent, repent, turn around, do things differently, be different. It's not just do things differently, but be different. Now, the interesting thing is that um, 
I don't know if you've heard this in the passage today. I, I actually just heard it this morning at the early service. I, was, I, I had completely missed it previously. Was it's when it talks about how the people were filled with expectation. Now, I don't know about you, but in our culture, if somebody comes along and says, you know, you brood of vipers and, you know, you need to change. Um, generally speaking, I don't think the public attitude is, oh, great. <laughs> Something's coming, right? It's more like, could you get that crank out of here? I mean, really? And, and that's probably what the, the leaders in Jerusalem were probably doing at the time, right? Oh, my goodness, another one of these. How can we get rid of this one, you know? Um, but it says the people were filled with expectation. And they're filled with expectation after they've heard John say to them in response to what should we do, you know, tax collectors don't take more than you're supposed to. Uh, soldiers don't extort money from people. Uh, do be, help share with one another, you know, change of life. And so people are starting to hear, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> There's something more here than just, hey, good times are coming. This is, the world is going to change, but even more, people are going to change. People are going to change. Be ready, start changing, because people are going to change. Which kind of makes sense. Which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but when I look around the world, um, almost everything that's going wrong has to do with us. Right? I mean, we're the problem. Uh, that's just bottom line. Human beings are the problem on the planet. So it would make sense that if people are going to change, that can only be good news, right? People are going to change. So people are filled with expectation. Perhaps their hearts are even starting to rejoice a little bit. Why? Because they're going to be changed. Of course, which makes the people think, well, wait a minute, is, is this guy the Messiah then? Is this the one that we've been waiting for who's going to set everything right? And then we get these words that most of us are used to now, perhaps, but if we're not, we get uncomfortable about, which is, John says, um, I come baptizing with water. Water's nice, right? But the one who is greater than I is coming after, and he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire, and his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, and he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's the, the, that's always makes our heart warm, right? <laughs> yeah, because we're all going, oh, where do I fall in that equation? Oh, gosh, yeah. But I was thinking of an image um, that I've, I've um, a little story that I heard a uh, while back of uh, a guy who was traveling in India, and he was in a trade district, if you will, and he went past a goldsmith shop, and he spotted this uh, elderly gentleman sitting over this big um, crucible on the fire and he was refining the gold in the old method which is that you put it in a, in, a, in a crucible over this hot hot fire and the gold melts and then what happens is the impurities rise to the surface and this guy said to the and saw this gentle, this old guy over the top scraping the top off the gold. And he said to him, so, so tell me, what, how, how does this work? Um, and how long do you have to do this? And this older gentleman said, the impurities keep rising, and then I scrape them off, and then they rise some more, and I scrape them off, and I keep doing that until I can see my reflection in the gold. And you see... The baptism with the Holy Spirit and with fire so that the chaff may be burnt <laughs> could be understood in a very judging kind of way. And it is, in the best sense of the way, judgment. Judgment. None of us really wants a world without judgment, right? You wouldn't want to go to court and the judge says, look, I don't want to be judgy. <laughs> right? right? You don't want to call 911 and say there's people breaking into my house and the guy goes, well, listen, maybe they mean well. I don't, I don't want to judge. <laughs> Right? Yeah. None of us wants a world of judgment. We talk about that all the time, don't we? don't want judgment. <laughs> no, we want judgment. We want good judgment, right? So we want our good and loving God, the God of grace, to judge. Because when we know when our God of grace judges, then 
our God of grace pours out on us the fire of his spirit and is removing the impurities and taking away the chaff until God can see God's reflection coming back perfectly in us. That is the power of God's spirit, the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire comes to purify and to remake us as human beings. It's a difficult thing in our culture and context because we hear so many messages repeated over and over again that life is about getting what I want, (laughs) that I get to be and do whatever I want to be. Follow your dream and stick to it and you will be able to achieve it. (laughs) There's a good way to be disappointed. Anyways, um, (laughs) because the truth at the heart of the gospel at the heart of our faith, is that God has created us for God's self. And that our restlessness and our yearnings are not to get stuff. (laughs) Our restlessness and our yearnings are united in the depths of our being with the God who made us, who will dwell in us by the power of God's spirit. To be fully human is not to be some kind of autonomous unit over here, but to be intimately united to the power and the presence of God by God's spirit and united to one another by God's spirit in love. That's what God has made us for and that's what God is making us for. That is what God is showing us and doing with us when God becomes flesh in Jesus Christ. Union with our humanity to be united to us in the most intimate ways. That is what God is doing when God pours out the spirit upon us so that we not just have a lovely, happy, rejoicing experience, but are being remade, being remade into what God intended us to be from the very beginning. Baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Yes, please. (laughs) Yes, please. Judge my heart. Remove what needs to be removed so that I can become fully and happily and joyfully what I'm meant to be. Today we are celebrating confirmation for Margaret. And confirmation is about a reaffirmation of our baptism. Our baptism in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we always teach in the church that when we are baptized in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then we receive the sealing of God's Spirit upon us. We are baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire. We are united to one another. We are united to Jesus in the depths of his love, in his death and resurrection. To reaffirm that, to renew that, is to say yet again, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's one thing to talk about purifying gold, I know God knows his business, but uh, purifying people is a lot harder. You can't just apply heat. Although that does help sometimes. (laughs) I've noticed, yeah. But it's a much harder thing because one of the things that needs to be purified is our desires, and another one is our will. (laughs) We need to have our will and our desires converted to be changed, to be purified by the Spirit. And so our renewal of that, our saying yes again. <laughs> See, human beings, we need to practice, right? We, do, we, we need to practice over and over again. That life is practicing. And we are practicing again in a special way to say, will you? Yes, I will. <laughs> will you? Yes, I will. A renewal of that commitment. And a renewal by prayer and the laying on of hands and the anointing with oil as a symbol of God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of fire to purify. We're doing that for Margaret today. But we all know, all of us who have been baptized, that we have walked into that same way that she is walking now, and that all of us are being given a chance as we join her in this to reaffirm again for ourselves our own commitment to say yes again and again, once more, turn our intention and our will towards the one who alone can recreate, 
purify and make us holy, can make us be what we are meant to be. So I pray that as we pray God's spirit upon Margaret, we will also open our hearts and say, yes, Lord, make your image in me, purify my heart, burn the chafe away so that we might rejoice in the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, now and in the day that you have appointed when you will consummate all things in your kingdom. Amen. Margaret, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do, and with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. This is for all people present. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We will. So let us join with her who, let us join with Margaret who commits herself again to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth? I will with God's help. So let us pray for Margaret as she affirms her baptism and for all the baptized everywhere, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayers that the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be kept in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world and witness to your love. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pray for the concerns of our church family. In our regular parish cycle of prayer, we lift up the young, Baharali, Ballard, and Barnsley families. And we pray for all who are isolated due to ill health, age, and circumstance, especially Ivy Houchen and Annie Kibblewhite. Aloud or in the silence of your hearts, please name those you know of needing prayer. In your mercy, your prayer. pray for the worldwide Anglican community and the Anglican Church of Canada, as well as our companion diocese of the Windward Islands. St. David and St. Paul on Grenada, and their clergy, Edward Mark. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. In the Diocese of Calgary, we pray for Holy Trinity, Rocky Mountain House, St. Cuthbert and St. George Sundry, and their clergy, Gerald Engelveld and John Gishler. Strengthen and sustain our church leaders especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada, Mark, National Indigenous Anglican Archbishop, Greg, Archbishop of Calgary and Metropolitan of Rupert's Land, and Derwin, our priest, that they may receive strength to persevere in these challenging times. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you that by the, the death of, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in this your servant the covenant you made with her at her baptism. Send her forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before her. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Margaret with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.